My name is Felicitas Team. Did you know that behind the name Krebs Suzette there's not only a real person but also a real mistake? I'm about to show you how that happened. Just a two hour flight from Berlin and I'm there. We are in the small city state of Monaco on the French Riviera. World renowned as a meeting spot for the super rich. A country where a third of the people are millionaires. Fast cars, expensive shops and old cuisine. Do you know which dish originated here in Monaco? We think it's uh, seafood, oysters. <laughs> uh, oh. Not escargot. Uh, what could it be? Uh, caviar or, or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> you might expect it to be an expensive dish, but it's not. It's the crab. And this is how most of us know it. But here in Monaco, a very special kind was invented. Crab Suzette. You have heard of it before, right? And it was right here on the famous Place de Casino. A very special restaurant was built here in 1868. Hello, madame. Welcome to Café de Paris, where Crepe Suzette was made by accident. Wow. This is beautiful. Yeah, this is the inside area of the restaurant. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the café was redesigned several times and then completely renovated in 1988 in the Belle Epoque style of the 1900s. To this day, the interior is reminiscent of an old Parisian bistro. And a lot of famous people came here to eat, right? Every day. Every day, all the year. We have like uh, sportive, we have um, singers, VIPs of uh, every kind, I cannot say the names, but every day, all, all year. Also in the 19th century. <laughs> like monarchs, kings, we had uh, princes uh, Edward VII, mm -hmm. uh, future king of England, who came here with uh, some guests. The chef prepared a crepe with orange juice and uh, Grand Marnier. Accidentally, it like uh, there, is, there was a flame. Don't us the secret, don't tell now. We'll save that for later. First, let's take a look at the kitchen, where it all begins with a crepe batter. Bonjour. Bonjour. So, uh, you are Cyril Nata and you know the whole story behind Crepe Suzette. Yes. First, we need to make a past. Ah, so, I mean, it doesn't look like a lot of ingredients. It looks easy. So, sugar? I also have a go. This is the first secret. The smell. The nice smell. This is the first secret. Because oh. in the orange you have the flavor. Oh, yeah. Is it here? Yeah. Do you think it has been the same recipe since the 19th century? I think so. Yeah? Yes. Because a lot of clients come in Café de Paris for this recipe. So it has been perfect for over 100 years? Yes. This probably has to do with the what secret ingredients. So, and now we need warm butter. Okay, so let's come go. with me. It's uh, special for the recipe because uh, he smells hazelnut and uh -huh. uh, in a flower. So you let the butter get brown, right? Yes. Until it gets a very nutty flavor, like yes. nut butter. Yes. So no hazelnuts, but it tastes like hazelnuts. Yes. That's a very good secret. No. I love butter. Now we just mix in milk and eggs. It's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> Next step, making the crepes. Huh? Turn this one. No Prince want. Edward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. So now we have the crepes? Yes, now you go upstairs for the flambe with the caramel sauce. For the steak. Yes. <laughs> with the crepes done, it's time for the all important last steps. And these happen outside on the terrace. You always do it like this? Yeah. And then is where the mistake happens, right? The mistake. Toujours mistake. Okay. <laughs> Get the fire started. Finally, it's time for the juicy part, where I find out how the faux pas happened and how the crepe Suzette got its name. In the late 1890s, Britain's Prince Edward was celebrating here with friends. 14-year-old kitchen apprentice 
only Champentier was preparing a crepe right at the table. Here's a later picture of him. C'était le moment que c'est là qu'en fait il se trompe. Au lieu de remettre du jus d'orange, il met du grand marnier et c'est là qu'en fait on va appeler la crêpe Suzette. Parce qu'en fait il se trompe. Au lieu de mettre encore du jus d'orange, il met de la, du grand marnier. Et après en fait il va le flamber, il se flambe tout seul en fait. So now... Voilà, so the whole mistake was that he chose liquor instead of orange juice. Exactement, exact, exactly. But, exact. Easy as that. But it's a good mistake. Probably the best mix-up in dessert history. And so the crepe Suzette was born. A thin pancake topped with orange liquor and orange sauce, then flambéed. But what about the name? So where's my prince now? I don't know, it's not me for the moment. Of course, Nicolas and Romain are not my princes. What do you think, my crepe? Very nice. It was the real prince who gave the crepe Suzette its name. Actually, as you know, it was made by mistake, but the chef Henri Charpentier didn't want to assume that mistake, and so he told to the um, Prince Edward, okay, this is crepe Edward, okay. like that, exactly. But as the prince was a gentleman, he told, no, there are ladies at the table, so let's call it Suzette, like uh, his, uh, his guest. So who was this Suzette? A friend. A friend. A friend. A friend. Let's <laughs> say a friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A friend, hmm. Prince Edward had been married to Princess Alexandra for 30 years by then. Just saying. Please. But while that is bittersweet, the crepe Suzette is delicious. Now I can taste all the secrets. I love crepes, but this one is very unique. The super orangery flavor from the zest combined with the liquor. Grand Manier, I love it. Crepes have also evolved in Monaco, though. And I will show you how. Just around the corner in the Haute Couture shopping center is a restaurant called Bubble Bar. On the menu, crepes with a twist. Hello. Hello. Have you chosen what would you like to eat? I heard that you have these fancy crepes. With green matcha, blue matcha, red velvet. You can try also with caviar. I get them all. Wow, you're yeah. hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whose mouth wouldn't water when the dishes look this tasty, right? Crepes in all colors. I can't wait to try. This city is crazy. Thank you very much. Bon appetit. I first try the matcha tea flavored one. I love the green tea flavor of the matcha. And now, the caviar. This is so Monaco. They all taste like heaven. Crazy, right? Or have you ever eaten red, blue, or green crabs before? and for the Monaco feeling, even some with caviar. But let's go back. Today I ate as many crepes as I normally eat in a year. They were all delicious, but this one has definitely the most exciting story. But which one is your favorite crepe? Drop us a line in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Mm -hmm.